includes on page four our this year's meetings for 2010 2011 uh, we meet every month uh, in on a Wednesday um, the membership for 2010 2011 um, the, the staff position that was open is now filled uh, Stephanie Shakrella has come on to the council we have had our first meeting and we have elected uh, Lisa Bernard will be the co-chair and uh, the election for the parent position which remains open is uh, due to happen on Wednesday night during our open house. Uh, John Marchese is our community rep. It's uh, often very difficult to get a community rep. He happens to be the manager of Stop and Shop here in uh, North Reading, so he's a great and valuable resource for us. Just to kind of go back a little bit on the 2009-2010 um, school improvement plan, uh, again, that first overarching um, guideline collaborative leadership uh, we set out last year to look at a leadership model which would reflect uh, a more team-centered approach i.e. team leaders as well as curriculum uh, leaders as well you probably heard a little bit about that already tonight so that is kind of ongoing that's really uh, a linchpin if you will for our school and how we want to set up a collaborative leadership uh, format so that we can foster um, you know, meaningful roles in the decision-making process as well as a shared vision. One of the things that we did accomplish last year is that we did go back to the mission statement and we published this new mission statement um, for the middle school. We introduced this to the committee during our handbook presentation. Um, I would tell you that uh, we have already actively used the mission, new mission statement in our student uh, meetings, again, handbook meetings, we really emphasized that safe, supportive, and challenging academic environment to all our students. Uh, we also used it as part of our um, opening exercises with our faculty. We actually did a collaborative brainstorm uh, identifying various areas of our school, subjects before school, after school, lunch period, in the corridor. Um, and we took the mission statement and we said, what does it look like? What does it sound like? What are the best practices that we should see in any one of the areas of our school with regard to our mission statement? So we're very happy that uh, our new mission statement has really become a vital part of our day-to-day -day conversations. Um, it, I did list that goal. We did, the council listed that goal is, is still ongoing because we are still, we're still working to embed the core values from our mission statement into our day-to-day -day, uh, best practices. So that's ongoing. Under the, uh, the other second category, curriculum instruction, of course, we all understand that middle education, middle level education can be academically excellent. And so we have started to look at not essential learnings, we've actually edited that. We're now looking at ed exit indicators at each grade level to really identify what would be the ed exit indicators for successful transition to the next grade level. And again, Going back to that mission statement, we're looking at knowledge, skills, and attitudes, best practices. And one of the th practical things that we decided to right out of the, the box last year was to develop a program of studies. This is the draft copy of our program of studies. Um, it goes for further editing uh, tomorrow afternoon, actually, to curriculum uh, subject-like meetings. Uh, we're looking at all the, all the course descriptions. We're looking at a definition for the team structure we're looking at all our assessment practices our best practices with regard to homework we're looking at all the course descriptions for every course in the school and we're really beginning to compare them to make sure that you know that we have some commonality between the courses and what we are expecting uh, of our kids so this is the, the draft copy uh, again started last year we expect that uh, by semester break this year we should be ready to present a final copy to the committee for review um, we have done an awful lot with the teacher teams. Uh, again, last year we restructured our schedule a little bit. All of our students are, are scheduled on to academic teams in all three grade levels. Uh, as you know, that we also changed, um, it's, it's a little further into the improvement plan, but we, we really made a big, significant change to our sixth grade model, uh, school within a school, uh, housed it all on the second floor. Um, as you know, just last week, we, we now have a handicap accessibility to our second floor. But this whole idea of uh, academic teams with the student-teacher ratio being reduced. So this year in grade six, 
last year in grade six, in this year in grade six and in grade seven, the academic, the typical academic teacher has a student uh, class load of only 85 students, the way we've structured this. So we're looking to team-centered, um, fewer number of students, more minutes in the day per subject area. Um, so we're really pretty happy about that. Um, again, going into the goal four on the curriculum instruction, last year we, we did um, implement some Title I tutoring, uh, kind of a response to intervention model with regard to students who are experiencing some struggles academically. Uh, certainly, based on our uh, AYP results this year, we're going to further enhance that program. And, you know, Superintendent and I have already actively talked about not only including Title I math tutoring, but also Title I ELA tutoring this year. So we, we have a, a plan going forward. Uh, I would mention that, again, based on this year's MCAS results, we'll be further amending the 2010-2011 school improvement plan to reflect uh, more emphasis uh, with regard to the AYP results. Again, moving into the last category, personalizing the learning environment, we've done probably more work here in the last two years that I've been in North Reading, uh, certainly as evidenced by uh, the My Voice survey and the data that we glean out of that. We've looked at, again, I've already touched upon the 